Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to our YouTube channel and welcome to this video. This is John from Programming Knowledge and this is part 8 of our PWA for Beginners tutorial series. So from the previous tutorial, we implemented our service worker for this particular application and um, we tried to intercept the fetch events coming from our PWA project. So if you try to go here in our inside our console we can see here the different um, fetch event um, displayed here with all the necessary resources being requested by our app so for example in this one the request we can see here that this particular request um, is for the materialize uh, that mean that CSS and also this one is for let us see this this one is for the uh, Google API's fonts, which is the material icons. This one is for the CSS. This is our own um, styles.css. So we define that inside our project, which is here. So basically, all the request right here is being requested by our app and uh, incorporating this request to the app. So, for example, the styles. So, it applies the styles here inside our app. Now, what we want is to save this request into our cache because eventually we, we want our app to support offline capability. So, that's why we want to save this into our cache, all the resources being requested. And all these um, resources compose the, uh, the app shell of our pwa project so basically even if the browser goes offline or the device goes offline the user should you know basically see the app with limited capability so that's why we want to save this um, resources into our cache and then later on if the device goes offline or the browser goes offline then we could request the resource uh, from the cache uh, of the browser so that's why we need to save that so in order for us to do that we need to go to our service worker file which is uh, sw.js so basically we also save the cache right or the, i mean the resources into our cache so if we go to the application and go to the cache storage and then the app shell resources we have here all the um resources being saved into the cache they materialize that mean that css the styles, the CSS, contacts, uh, the, the PNG or the image itself. This is the logo. Um, we also have the index.html, the app.js, and other um, resource file. Now, as I've said, we're going to use or we're going to make use of this cache storage. And even if the device goes offline, we can get all these resources coming from our cache. Okay, so now here in our service worker.js file, we have here the assets that we're trying to save or simply the resources being requested by the app. And currently, we're not using this. We're just saving this into our um, assets or I mean into the cache of, of the browser, but we're not currently saving this or we're not currently using this inside our app. So... What we want is to change this service worker files. So we have here the install event right here, or we're simply um, listening to the install event of the service worker. Now, um, we could move this particular line right here inside the install event. Okay, so basically what we're trying to do is um, adding the cache or adding the resources into the cache if we um, detect the installed event of the service worker so whenever um, the browser tries to install the this particular event right here we're saving the resources into the cache not directly as previously uh, configured by us right here so this is directly saving the resources into the cache but what we want is wait for the install event and then inside the installed event we can 
save the resources into the, into the cache okay and um before anything else also we need to add another method or function right here inside our install event listener so we're going to use the event um, parameter right here and then um, we're going to use the wait until function okay so the purpose of this wait until function is that it it prolongs the installed event okay and it's going to wait for um, adding the resources into the cache so basically what we're trying to do here is just prolong the event or installed event and then wait until all the resources are being you know saved into the cache of the browser okay so now we have that we could you know save that and here inside our fetch event right here um, what we could do is try to check resources being requested so if that particular resource is present in the cache then we're gonna use that we're gonna use that resource coming from our cache instead of you know directly requesting that from the URL or from the remote server so that's why in here inside our fetch uh, event listener we need to add also some other cache files or some other resources into the cache so basically for example um, right here we could check if um, caches that match event that request then we could return a promise right here or a, a then statement or then uh, function and then we could specify the cache resources right here and then we could return the caches and then open but before we proceed right here we need to add in an event um, basically we're, we're just gonna use this um, event object right here so event and then respond um, resp with okay so this is another method or function that we're gonna use so basically what we're uh, what this trying to do is um, we're trying to um, intercept the fetch event and then we're adding our own response right here so event that respond with so we could um, configure our own response right here so basically what, what we could do is move right uh, move this right here inside okay and then what we're trying to do here is that we're checking if the cache contains the request event meaning so for example the 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 app request the styles the CSS and if it is inside the cache then we're gonna add here the then function right here so basically this particular line is asynchronous then that's why we could add the then function right here and then it's going to return the cache resources or for example the styles the CSS inside the um, cache browser or browsers cache then what we will do here is to return the resources or the resource itself so instead of opening we could make this or we could return the cache resource right here so return and then the cache resources or the resource coming from our cache if the cache event or cache has this particular uh, resources being requested okay but there are also times that the cache response there are cases that uh, it will return an um, in null or empty because there are cases that you 
don't already have the asset saved into the borrower's cash so that's why sometimes it returns empty or null so in that situation what we could do is add here the two pipes and basically we just want to return the request okay so again uh, what we're doing here is we're intercepting the fetch event and then we're checking if the request is inside the cache if that's the case then we could return the cache resources otherwise we will return the request event itself so let's try this inside our app so let's go back here and refresh okay and then if we go here in our network so as you can see here that um, it is coming from the service worker so instead of um, coming from the remote server this is coming from our service worker meaning it fetches the event or fetches, fetches the resources coming from our browser or cache of the browser Okay, so in the next video, we're going to um, make use of this particular resources being requested by our, by our app. And then um, we could, you know, support the offline capability of our um, PWA project. Okay, so I think that's all there is to it in this video, guys. And thank you for watching and see you in the next video.